Welcome back to CarnadiAces.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. In this video we're going to be looking at the answers to the membership and subset problems that we gave in the last video. If you haven't worked these problems yet, please give them a try. We had for all E, E is a subclass of itself. It's not the case that for all C and all D, C being a subclass of D implies that C is a member of D. And for all A and all B, B is a subclass of A, and A is a subclass of B implies that A is identical to B. Note that all of these are definitely easier than the proof we showed in the last video. So hopefully you should be able to do them without too much trouble. But if you had trouble or you just want to see if your answer is right, check out the following. So we're trying to prove for all E, E is a subclass of itself. We're going to do an assumed indirect proof. So we'll assume that it's false and show that it, that leads to a contradiction, so it must be true. We'll do a change of quantifier to move that negation inside, and then we'll existentially instantiate E to M. So it's not the case that M is a subclass of itself. Then by subclass definition, we can have, it's not the case that for all X, X is a member of M implies that X is a member of M. Existential or change of quantifier to change the universal quantifier to an existential quantifier, and then we'll existentially instantiate x to a. It's not the case that a is a member of m implies that a is a member of m. Hopefully you see where we're going here. We'll use implication to split out that uh, implication sign into a disjunction. We'll then use de Morgan's law to distribute the negation across. And then double negation just gets us an outright contradiction. A is a member of M and A is not a member of M. This is a contradiction, so we can conclude from 1 through 9 in direct proof that for all E, E is a member of E. Q, E, D. All right. Next up, we're trying to show that it's not the case that for all C and all D, C is a subclass of D implies that C is a member of D. So... There are some situations in which being a member of something doesn't make you a subclass of it. Well, let's see. So we have, once again, an assumed indirect proof. Then we're going to use our useful ordinary set theorem to show that for all A, there exists a B such that B is a subclass of A and B is not a member of A. We'll universally instantiate A to Z and B to L like we did before. And then we're going to take our original premise and use universal instantiation twice to get L and Z again because both of those are universal on C and D. We can get that again. We'll simplify premise 4 down. We'll use modus ponens on 5 and 6 to get L as a member of Z. And then we'll simplify 4 down to get L as not a member of Z, use definition of non-membership to make that really explicit, and then we'll conjoin those two and end up with a contradiction. 1 through 10 shows us that it's not the case that for all C and all D, C is a subclass of D implies that C is a member of D. That was what we were trying to prove. The more difficult way to prove this is without the ordinary set theorem and proving basically the ordinary set theorem on your own and then proving this. If you want a challenge, give it a try, and it'll look very similar to the proof from the last video, just with a little bit extra tacked on at the end. And now finally, if two classes are subclasses of each other, then they are identical to each other. So we're going to deny that statement to start with assumed indirect proof. We'll do a double change of quantifier, and then existentially instantiate both of those. We'll instantiate them to K and J. We use implication to turn that into a disjunction, De Morgan's law and double negation to make that a conjunction. Then we're going to use the existentiality axiom to show that if for all x, x is a member of j is materially equivalent to x is a member of k, that implies that j is equal to k. We have from premise 5, it's not the case that j is equal to k. So we can use our modus tollens to run that backwards. A change of quantifier, and then a, that should be existential instantiation, premise 9, not premise 8 for a change of quantifier, uh, will give us it's not the case that A is a member of J is materially equivalent to A is a member of K. If we simplify, 
Uh, premise five down, we get k is a subclass of j and j is a subclass of k. Simplify again from premise 11, we get k is a subclass of j. By our subclass definition, that means for all x, x is a member of k implies that x is a member of j. We'll universally instantiate that x to an a because that's what we were working with before. And that'll show that a is a member of k implies that a is a member of j. We'll do this again on the other side to get that a is a member of j implies that a is a member of k. Conjoining them and using equivalence will show that a is a member of j is materially equivalent to a is a member of k, which is in direct contradiction to the claim that it's not the case that a is a member of j is materially equivalent to a is a member of k. So that's a contradiction, meaning that we can conclude the negation of our original statement, which is just our conclusion for all a and all b if b is a subclass of a and a is a subclass of b, then b equals a. 1 through 20, indirect proof. Up next, we're going to look at what is the null set or the empty set. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and watch a new video every single day, every day here in October. And stay skeptical, everybody.